As consumers of entertainment, it's easy for us to dismiss things as not real when they don't live up to the standards of quality that we place on them. You might think that fan fiction isn't a real story, or that music created by a small YouTuber isn't worthy of money or an album. But is that really fair? What is the line that makes these things real? What's up, Internet? My name is Ingenious Clown, and I'd like to take a few moments to talk about this issue as it relates to gaming. Chances are pretty good that you or someone you know refuses to take mobile games and browser games seriously. Their reasons generally range from it's all pay to win trash to I only play real games and everything in between. But like I asked earlier, is that really fair? Computing and what is possible within the worlds created in these video games have evolved at such a rapid pace over the past three decades, but so has our expectation of the medium itself. With games like The Last of Us pushing the bounds of interactive cinematic storytelling and multiple new graphical powerhouses being released year after year, it's easy to find yourself wanting more and more. But let's take a step back and take a closer look at my choice of words just a second ago. Computing and what is possible within the worlds created. This is important. The evolution of possibility does not necessarily eliminate the possibilities of the past. This is incredibly apparent when you take a look at the rapidly expanding library of indie games on Steam. While current technology can allow a one-man team to exist and be successful in this field, many of these games, if taken purely from an outsider's point of view, look like they belong in the past. Axiom Verge looks like it was ripped right out of 1993, while Shovel Knight was deliberately created with the limitations of NES hardware in mind. But where these indie developers have found success and mainstream acceptance, let's zoom out just a little bit more and take a look at the indie of indies. The games that require little more than a URL to play, because they play directly from your browser. You might play these on Newgrounds or Armor Games or Congregate, but they live in your browser and look like games ripped out of bygone eras. And because of that, I think it's kind of hard to take them seriously. But while it's difficult to take these games seriously a lot of the time, I also think that they're some of the most important aspects of gaming today. First, they're important because of their accessibility to the players. If all you need is a URL and a little bit of your time, and let's face it, if you're playing games already, then you have some time, then it's easy to dive in. But what makes the accessibility of these games so important is how they can give you a new experience with very little investment. It's a small thing, but it's one big reason why I play so many different games and why I keep coming back to Newgrounds and sites like it. Because every new game is a new experience. Even if it's a minor change of mechanics, or different art or different levels on the same platforming that you've played a million times before, it's still a unique composition. And what you get from it is entirely up to you. Which, to me, kind of makes it like visiting an art museum in a way. Secondly, they are important because of the power that they can offer to game developers themselves. And I don't mean power in the traditional sense with more processing potential. I mean power to experiment with a canvas that requires very little investment relative to releasing software on a platform like Steam. Anyone who frequently visits Flash portals can attest to how absolutely weird games can be on these websites. Developers have the power to express themselves creatively in any way that they wish. And it's not just creative power that developers get either. It's valuable experience in creating and maintaining a game and getting feedback from players. In fact, many successful game developers have backgrounds on Newgrounds, including the developers behind Castle Crashers, as well as one of my personal favorites, The Binding of Isaac. Hopefully with all of this, I've left you with just a little more respect for browser games as a whole. Many of what I said applies to mobile gaming too, but with the absolute flood of so-called game factories that just churn out games with no soul as they desperately hope to stumble into the next viral hit, as well as the abundance of in-app purchases, it's difficult for me to really place mobile gaming onto the same level of importance as browser games. But that's a discussion for another time. Before I leave, I want to share with you one of my absolute favorite browser games of all time. Tentacle Wars and its sequel, Tentacle Wars The Purple Menace. Don't let the name scare you, it's not hentai or anything like that. It's just a very well-made Flash game with simple yet very satisfying gameplay with a little bit of strategy involved. You can find them by searching for Tentacle Wars on Newgrounds, or you can just check the description below for a link. If you've got 20 minutes or so to kill, I highly recommend giving them a try. So what do you think? Does browser gaming get treated fairly? Let me know in the comments below! 
And while you're at it, feel free to share your favorite browser games. But please, no links. YouTube tends to collect those in the spam filter, so just names should be good. And if you like this video, please be sure to hit that like button on your way out, and if you haven't already, be sure to follow me on Twitter at IngeniousClown and hit that subscribe button for more awesome gaming content here in the future, and I will see you next time.